Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of inspiring classes for curious and creative people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. If you are interested in doing your creative work more effectively, then I highly recommend the class taught by Thomas Frank called Productivity for Creatives, Build a System that Brings Out Your Best. He encourages you to let your creativity shine and let your skills build in the process. Skillshare is created specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new classes. When you join, you can try one of Skillshare's live classes. Experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working along with other members. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, it's officially time to start putting tin up on the roof. Um, I need to cut the tin from 14 feet down to 13 feet. And I'm gonna do that with my skill saw. I, I bought a blade that will cut that metal, but I need to change the blades out. And then I need to cut uh, at least 15 pieces. It takes 15 pieces per side. I'm gonna do the front side first because there's no conflict with any vents or chimney or any of that stuff. And get that done. And then if all goes well, I'll maybe even get to the back side today. Well, darn it. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh. 
if you follow us on Instagram, then you know that a few days ago we managed to catch that big male raccoon that's been slowly taking out all of our laying hens. We have lost over a dozen laying hens in the last three weeks. And finally, I baited that trap in a way where I was able to catch him. It would be a beautiful thing if we could all live alongside each other and all do what we have to do to get by without encroaching on each other's lives. Because truthfully, he was here before I was more than likely. But the bottom line is raccoons are predators. And just because there's been a whole bunch of Disney movies that have made those raccoons look cute and fuzzy and they, and they have personality and they can be trained to be pets, but not as a mature male like this raccoon here. If we're gonna have chickens, I have an obligation to protect our chickens. And the value that we place on our chickens' lives is higher than the value that we place on the raccoon. I could haul the raccoon down the road, dump him off somewhere else, but then he just becomes somebody else's problems and he will continue to do what he has to do, especially now that he's tasted that chicken. So I'll do what I have to do to take care of him. It's not my favorite thing to do, but it's part of the job. My dad was a biology teacher for many, many years. His classroom out at the high school was filled with specimens that he'd collected and or kids had brought in and given to him over the years. He loved and appreciated life. I can remember him talking about observing nature without intervening or harming nature. He did not hunt. His dad did not hunt. My grandfather on my mom's side more than likely did hunt as he was growing up in the hills of Kentucky during the Depression but I never heard him talk about it. At some point in high school, I hung around with a bunch of guys that were very into dove and quail hunting in Arizona. So I learned to dove and quail hunt and I loved it. This is more than likely why I love bird dogs. After spending three months in the high deserts of Arizona when I was 18 years old, I learned that nature does not care about your feelings or my feelings for that matter. Nature and all the animals that live within nature do what they have to do to survive at any expense. because we made the decision to live in nature, now we carefully get to navigate our life and our animals' lives in the best possible way without doing any more harm than we have to. But nature is wild and she always will be. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Go get him. 
Get him. Right there, Bando. Get her. Get her. Ah, come here. No. Come here. Back to the roof. If this is not the correct way to install a metal roof, specifically to our application, then I'm not sure what that right way would be. The things that seem to be important to me come down to lining up the tin properly on the roof, minimizing the number of penetrations yet Installing enough screws to ensure that the roof stays where it's put. Placing the factory cut edges at the bottom and the edges that I cut will be hidden under the ridge cap. Use it. <laughs> What's that? Um, it's like the thing to like, make a fire. It's, stick it, it's a help. spindle. Oh, really? What's that? Oh yeah, and then you're like that. To make a well, fire. Well, you guys sounds like you guys know how to do it. We need to fill this up with tinder. Wait, what is tinder? What is Tinder's called? what's required to start a fire. What's what does like, it come from? Part of a tree. Let's go. I'll show you. Come on. Can I open the knife up? this right there so Ooh. that right there and then we're gonna peel all this off it's not a oh you want to put it in here yeah it's supposed to go in the tinder bag yeah but that's gonna be off okay this is this is enough right here We need like 15 of these rocks. Oh my try and get all of them if you can. I'll get the big ones, you guys get the ones you can handle. Nobody smash each other's fingers. We need to make a round circle. Can I, can you, like, I'll, take them out? And I'll take them out, you guys start making the circle. We have to have little teeny tiny sticks first. Like little teeny tiny sticks. You need like an arm load of them. Yeah, Even a little bit of grass, a little bit of dead dry grass is good too. That's probably that's probably good enough. We're trying to make a little bird nest to put the coal. Okay, right there. So we're gonna put the coal right inside that. Keep pressure down and spin it at the same time. Oh gosh. Okay, okay let me try we're getting a little bit of pump coming out. That's good. 
Reed, you want to try it? Yeah. You got to push down. Okay, oh. and you have to keep it in the hole. That's the most important part. That's right. You have to push down really hard. I see cold. Okay, hang on. Sorry, hold on. All right, watch out. Let go. Oh. Yes. Now we gotta get the fire going. Why did that take so long? Hey, there's been times it took me four or five hours because it was raining. Okay, keep putting more sticks on it. Even big sticks? Yes, now it's time for big stuff. Burn down a little bit and then we'll do, make some ash cakes. Initially, as I installed the panels, I only put screws in the very first panel. Then I secured every individual piece to the next piece without running any screws down into the roof until I know for sure that that bottom edge is sitting square to the house. I do not want to cut that bottom edge if possible. These panels do have a little bit of give and take, like an accordion, although nowhere near that much movement, but just enough movement to get it lined up on the bottom and on the sides, which naturally looks perfect when the line across the bottom is perfectly straight, but also the line up the rafters across the front of the house also has to line up. On this front side, because there are no vents or chimney or any other obstructions, it was very easy to get this done. On the back side, it's going to take a little bit more work. I used a full piece to start closest to where we park. Then the last piece needed to cover the roof that did have to be cut down was not visible again from this area where we park. So everything looks good together. Okay, front side is 100% done. Uh, now I'm gonna get on the back side, get as far as I can on the back side, and uh, see if I can't get this done today. That leaves me a lot of time to do a whole lot of other things that uh, I've been 
itching to get to, so I think that's what I'm going to do. If I stand down in the front yard and look up at the new tin roof, it is perfectly lined up and everything looks great. Once I got everything lined up, that's when I started screwing everything off. The salesperson that sold me the tin and all the screws tried to convince me that I needed to install a screw every square foot. But there's no way I'm putting that many screws or that many penetrations in the new roof. But I definitely put enough screws in to make sure it was secure. I talked about it last week, but all of this tin is covered in a solvent that is incredibly slippery. I was hanging onto that strap for dear life. I made an effort to wipe every piece of tin down before I took it up on the roof, but it was still quite slick. I even got to a point where I was using brake parts cleaner on the soles of my tennis shoes before I climbed up on the roof, trying to maximize my traction, but it was still very, very slippery. It seems like after the tin sits out for a few days in the sun, the slippery goes away. Because I have the vents in the chimney on the back side of the house, I'm spending a little bit more time making sure that everything is lined up across the bottom before I screw it off and before I start cutting out the openings for the chimney and the sewer vents. I already installed roofing jacks around the three sewer vents underneath the tin, but I'm actually going to come back and install a special roofing jack that's made for metal roofing over the top of the vents as well. So there's no way those vents will ever leak. The chimney is a little bit of a different story and I'm still trying to decide how I'm going to seal that off properly because of how large the opening is and because of how warm it gets. From this point on, our Wednesday videos will be available at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and our Sunday videos will be available at noon Mountain Standard Time.